guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to be building a raised bed. It's going to be, be right over here for the loofah and the ube because I want it to be a type of raised bed that the, the tuber can grow deep into the earth so it's not going to have um, uh, you know, a, a bottom to this raised bed. Before we get started, I want to thank Thriving Design for sponsoring today's video. I really love using their products it's called Sea Bites to snap on these garden stakes. They're super durable. If you guys don't know what they are, you can see, you know, my past episodes where I've used them in multiple garden projects. I'll, I'll point you guys to a, um, some of those episodes down below the description box. So to make this raised bed, it's actually a pretty simple idea and I'm going to be using the Sea Bites and some garden stakes to build sort of like the frame for the raised bed. Now if you guys are not using sea bites, you can use some stakes or you know or even tie strings around to make this work. But I'm gonna be using the the sea bites because it's really durable, it's easy to work with and um you guys can make the raised bed using any kind of stakes, sticks that you have, you know, like branches or bamboo sticks that you might have laying around or if you guys grow bamboo, that's, that would be like the perfect material, I think, that you can work with building the raised bed. You can use anything that you want to basically form the border to hold the soil together. I'm going to be using some bamboo sticks for the back side of it and then in the front and all around the sides where it's like you can see I kind of want to make it a little nicer so I went out and I found these uh, bamboo uh, table settings they're basically like mats for your your dining table and I think it's gonna be it should work out well I'm gonna have it kind of like a decorative raised bed sort of a thing and it's pretty cheap this thing was like five dollars so for this whole set so I'm just gonna line it up as a border here to get something to hold the borders, I'm going to use garden stakes because it's going to work out perfectly for me using the garden stakes. And I got these sea bites here. They're going to snap on really easily. I mean, it's built to fit for these sort of uh, garden stakes. So I'm going to be using this to build the frame. I'm going to first stake this down to know how deep it can go that way. I can know, you know, I'll know how to measure out like where to cut. Now that I know how deep this can go, I can measure out the height that I want to cut it at. Just because I'm trying to make things look nice, I'm going to cut it to, you know, pretty close to the height of the border. I'm just going to do it like this high right here. All right. Okay, I'm just gonna make this mark and then I'm gonna saw this. <laughs> these are some steak caps. I'd love using these so that I can close this up. give you guys a general picture of what it looks like. So, one, two. It's gonna put the stick down uh, here. Okay. So I'm using these table mats as like a quick way to form the border. Even like if you cut like a wooden board, that would work too. Kind of like line it like this, kind of overlap it a little. The other one can be out here so it really holds it in place. And I'm just doing this, you know, to lay things out for now, and then we're gonna start putting the C bites on to snap it in place. And this last one here can again overlap.
as you can see the first part which is the frame and the borders have been built out the next thing we're going to do is to fill up that space the back uh, border here the reason I'm doing this is because the table mats I found came with just four pieces so it's all used up and then to also have the back being something different I'm able to show you guys that you know you can use different types of materials to build the border so the back side because there's different parts of um, the ground it's actually really hard for me to stake in so the left I just kind of left this part out because Oh, uh, I figure I don't really need it. I mean, the whole point of having a frame is to hold the soil together. So that's all it's needed, really. Ideally, I would like to put a stake down here, but because I'm not able to, I got the other ones here to support it. You can see I got all these sticks and bamboo sticks and branches, even the branches from uh, the mulberry tree. I already cut them down to size, so I'm just going to lay these down on the back side. going to stack it up to form a wall. By the way, if you guys want to look for table mats to make this, be sure to look for materials, I mean any kind of materials you want to work with in the garden. You want to think about, uh, you know, if it's like the material has been dyed uh, just for, I guess especially when you're growing food, you don't want the chemicals to be leaching out in the soil for your plants to, you know, absorb. So this is the one that's as natural of like a made of bamboo type of material that I could find at the store. There are different types of bamboos that some are even stained, so this one is not stained. Alright, looks like I need a couple more to go. Alright, so this one's going to go on the side, and I'm just going to form an X on the side. It's like this size sharp. Just going to stake it into the ground. And if this part needs to be held up some more, just add another stake down. Next, we're just going to align this using a weed guard. You can use any weed guard that you like. I've been using this kind of things for years now. It's gone, you know, placed under the pavements and uh, really helps to prevent weeds to come through. And it's supposed to be a more like a natural material compared to the, the more plastic kind of style. So I'm just going to put this to line it out to give it a little extra buffer and to really make sure that the soil does retain inside this area. So I'm just going to measure this out. And I'm, I'm just going to do this on all four sides, just the walls, not the bottom, because we are keeping the bottom uh, open. If you guys want to uh, do the bottom too, you can certainly do that. All right, I got these two pieces cut. I intentionally made this taller, like about an inch or an inch and a half taller than the top so that I can kind of fold it down a little bit on the bottom to really make sure that the soil sits in there. Got some garden clips. Garden clips are always handy in the garden.
So you can pour in any kind of garden scraps just to fill it up and then I can add a little bit of worm castings and some fertilizer in. Alright, this thing is filling up. I'm excited. <laughs> so usually if I have some kitchen scraps, I can just treat this like a compost bin and just throw some in the center and then put some, you know, mix it up with some uh, potting soil or your own compost. If this gets too dusty, just hose it down a little. No breathing. Now that this raised bed is getting full, I'm going to add the rest of it with some fresh potting soil. Alright you guys, today is going to be a fun day. Not that the building part was not fun, but this is the extra fun part. I'm going to be mixing up some worm castings that I have from the worm bin with some rock dust into this soil mix. And then I'm going to be planting a couple of things here. Now I'm going to be planting the loofah, sunchoke, and the yam here. Isn't this beautiful? Poppies are pretty short-lived, especially in Southern California. Once the heat kicks in, they're pretty much gone. So I can just plant it where the uh, yam will be because the yam are just sprouting right now. I want them to get to like a decent size before I plant them in. So for now, I'm just going to put something pretty right here. Alrighty guys. Just a couple of tips I want to share with you about building this raised bed. This is obviously something more temporary, especially because I'm using uh, table mats. So over time, you know, as like with weather and everything, the the thread might fall apart, and then this would break break down. But this is not an issue for me because I'm looking for this to last for about a year or so, just so I can um, plant tubers. So if you guys want to, you know, grow things like potatoes or or sweet potatoes, things like that. When you harvest it, you can just simply remove this and um, harvest. If you're looking for something more long-term, definitely look for like wood, wooden boards, or even if you have leftover tile from remodeling projects or something, and just hold it down with the stakes, then it would last uh, much longer than like the material that I'm using right now. Did you guys know that poppies actually have a slight fragrance? Thank you, you guys, for joining me out here today to build out this raised bed. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And again, I want to say thank you to Thriving Design for sponsoring today's episode. If you guys want to check them out, be sure to use my code for free shipping. Also, head over to their Instagram and be inspired by the plenty of gardening ideas that they have to share with you. If you guys are looking for more ideas for gardening DIY, be sure to check out my playlist. I'll leave the links of everything that I've mentioned, including my website, down below this uh, video for you guys. Thank you again. Happy gardening. Happy spring. I shall see you guys right back here very soon. Bye. Bye.